There are so many doors open to you after you've learned bioinformatics. Whether you've learned those skills with a master's, with a PhD, or simply learning on the job. Stay tuned on today's video where we're gonna explore all of the career options you have once you've got your bioinformatics skill set. Wanna be inspired, wanna get excited? Stay tuned for this episode of Genomics with Georgia. If you're new here, my name's Georgia. This is Genomics with Georgia. Welcome to my channel where I share all I know about getting into this amazing world of bioinformatics. I love it and I wanna share with you guys why I love it so much. We already know that there are so many ways to get your bioinformatics skill set. You can get one by taking a master's in bioinformatics, you can get one by doing a PhD research project in bioinformatics, or you can get one by learning on the job doing bioinformatics. Secretly, that's my favorite option. <laughs> but anyway, there's multiple ways to learn this skill set. But the question is, what can you do once you've got this skill set? There are loads and loads of career options open to you. So we're going to explore all the things you can do with this skill set, not just right now, but all the many paths you can go on to take for the rest of your career. Let's recap on what do we mean by a bioinformatics skill set anyway. So when I'm referring to a bioinformatics skill set, I'm talking about three things. I'm talking about your biology domain knowledge. I'm talking about your data analysis skills. And then we're talking about your computer science skills. So those three things are your bioinformatics skill set. I'm gonna split up today's video into a few segments and then we'll expand on each of them. First of all, we're gonna address academia. And this isn't as simple as you think in terms of careers. So stay tuned for the many different paths within academia you can go into with your bioinformatics qualification or skill set. Then we're going to touch on industry. So the biotech industry is huge. And we'll mention things like startups, things like bigger corporations. And then we're going to touch on tech, the wonderful world of tech. Whether that's big tech companies, again, whether that's startups, we'll explore your job opportunities in that space. And then finally, we'll throw in a miscellaneous section of other careers and jobs that you can use your bioinformatics skill set in that might not be leaping out to you right now. So first things first, we're going to talk about academic careers and job opportunities. So I think this one is really key to touch on first, because if you're coming from a biology background, academic jobs and academic career paths are going to be the thing that you are most familiar with but i'm here to explain to you today that within academia there are so many different varieties of bioinformatic roles and career paths that you can go on within academia the one that you'll be most familiar with is the very stereotypical academic career path and this is the one where you go purely into research with the idea of becoming a professor. And this is where the PhD is essential. So often I talk about on this channel how you don't need a PhD to go into bioinformatics. And I still stand by that, that is definitely true. However, if you want to enter into a career where you want to progress through academia and become a professor, you're gonna have to do that via the traditional route. So what do we mean by this? Once you finish your bachelor's, you maybe go and do a master's, but then you go and do a PhD research thesis. Within that, it's probably going to be in bioinformatics, unless you've got a very clever way of transitioning into it otherwise. So in the UK, you'd be spending three to four years on a project. Um, in other places like Canada uh, and America, PhDs take much longer. So we're looking about five to six years. But essentially, you spend time diving into the nitty gritty of a very specific research topic. And in our case, you'll have done it in bioinformatics. So after you finish your PhD, you then go on to do a postdoc. So doing a postdoc is another academic next section of work. So it's more independent than a PhD. So PhD, your supervisor will be guiding the direction of your research. Whereas after the PhD, you then go to do a postdoc in bioinformatics. And then essentially you keep doing postdocs after postdoc, after postdoc, after postdoc, after postdoc until you finally get your professorship. This is a career path which is one applicable to bioinformatics. You could become a professor of bioinformatics at a university, hopefully maybe running your own research group. This route is very niche and very few people actually make it into professorships. A lot of people spend many, many years of their lives taking postdoc after postdoc after postdoc. You often have to move countries a lot of the time to get these really specific research positions. 
because you're becoming an expert in your field, it's very difficult to get those next opportunities because they have to be really in your niche. And we all know how vast the world of science is. So finding those niche opportunities is quite a difficult task, but that is one career option available to you if you've learned bioinformatics, but in a research capacity with a PhD qualification. Now, luckily for my viewers here that do either don't want to pursue a PhD or aren't pursuing a PhD or it's not feasible for them. I mean, PhDs don't pay you anything. And if you have financial commitments, doing a PhD is pretty much out of the question. So what are the other job opportunities without a PhD? Well, don't worry guys, there are so many. And this is one of the reasons why I don't think I will ever do a PhD. Although don't hold me to that because we never know. But there are so many other careers without the PhD. So let's park the PhD route park that completely. I'm now gonna talk about other careers still in academia that you can do without the PhD. You'll be surprised to know that you can still have a research career within academia without having a PhD. Many, many research groups now, as they're dealing with vast amounts of genomic and biological data, need scientists that can understand, interpret, and analyze these data types. And this is where a research career can come in in academic research institutes or universities. A lot of the time, this role is called a technician role. We have something in the UK called the Technician's Commitment, which is a really, really strong initiative promoting careers as a technician. You're not gonna be rising through the ranks to group leader, to, um, to professorship. That's not the way we're gonna go. But you can still have a career within academia where you are becoming a very skilled, a very well-rounded, technician. What would this actually look like? You'd come in as a bioinformatician, genomic data scientist, etc, etc, and you essentially progress up the career ladder. You can go from junior to senior to principal, then you can start leading projects, leading strategy, leading initiatives. More and more research institutes are having these roles open where you don't need to be a PhD qualified scientist to be leading bits of research. So this is completely separate from postdoc, PhD, grant funded stuff. Within research institutes, you can still be a leader in your field without having a traditional academic group. I think this is a fantastic way to have a career because A, you're coming in much earlier as an employee, which I say on this channel a lot is fantastic because you're earning a salary, it's easier to get loans, it's easier to well, you're contributing to your pension. There's loads of great benefits of being an employee rather than being on a stipend with a PhD or a postdoc, also more money, which is also great. You are working in teams much more rather than in a very siloed research project. It's a much more collaborative way to learn and you get to work on a bigger variety of projects because you're not tied in to a very specific niche project. Also look up the technician's commitment if you're not familiar with that. But it is so brilliant that we have these careers now within academia that are not traditional academic research careers, but you're still in research. Boom. The third career option we have within academia, and I know there's so many. The third one is being a part of the core services. So within research institutes, you have your research groups led by a PI, but then sometimes bigger research institutes will have these core facilities so if they've got samples that need processing, whether that's wet lab, um, but I'm thinking about talking about dry lab, these get sent off to core services and then it's the core service team that then work on that data. So that's another space within academia where you can have a career. So you're not part of a research group doing research specific analyses. You're actually part of an institute's core services. You'd be building pipelines. You'd be maybe running a service desk. You're the go-to core group of people for the other research groups to rely on for support. So this is a really great way to have a career too, because you get to interact with loads of research groups in your institute, not just one group. You get to handle lots of different types of data because the different groups will be sending you in multiple different things. You get to be a fantastic communicator because you're liaising with all these people all the time. And usually you'll get to develop kind of much more stronger informatic and computational skills, which is again, really, really great if that's something that you're into. 
So the fourth one I want to highlight is operational science. What on earth do I mean by this? And it's a term that I've only really become familiar with recently. There are many instances in research institutes where you will have had a core academic group, they create a product or a service, and then they expand this service out, but they're still within the university. So it's not a core research group. It's like the child of a core research group. And then you'll have people working in the bioinformatics data space within these units where they are still working at the cutting edge of research, but they're in a more operational environment. So they're building products, which is kind of similar to what we see in industry. These entities exist within academic research institutes when they're on the way of spinning out. And spinning out takes a long time. Sometimes people don't spin out and they stay still kind of within the research institute, but not quite. But anyway, these operational units are another fantastic way to grow a career. One of the highlights of these is, again, getting to work in this product focused environment, which means that rather than answering research questions, you will be helping to analyze and interpret data to feed back to product development. You'll get to be familiar with things like Agile and Scrum, and you'll get to work with business people. And when I say business people, you'll have people within the unit, within your delivery system. They come from project management backgrounds, product management backgrounds. They come from more operational service delivery backgrounds. And this is a fantastic way to learn new skills that are really valuable, especially if you're considering a career in industry, being able to be exposed to these kinds of skills and ways of working still within the umbrella of academia, I think is a great way to start bridging that gap between academia and industry. So there you have it. There are four different careers within academia that you can go into with a bioinformatics skill set. Who would have known? So the second big career that you can enter into with your bioinformatics skill set is a career in industry. So when we say a career in industry, what are we talking about? And if you're anything like me and like to scroll on Twitter a lot, if you have a lot of sciencey people on Twitter, you'll see that everyone's always tweeting about jumping from academia over to industry and being so much happier with their massive paycheck. And while that is true, yeah, there's a lot more to it than that. So let's dive into what a career in industry would actually mean for you and your bioinformatics skill set. So firstly, industry, the world of biotech, pharma, what are we talking about here? So we know that academia is the research we do at uni, but on a bigger, more intense scale. Industry are companies and businesses that have a service or a product that they're charging people for. In our case, when we say industry, as scientists, we're talking about biotech or pharma. Biotech, what's biotech? It's essentially companies who have products that are related to the biology space. So whether that's people that develop sequencing machines and then technology to then analyze sequence outputs. Places like Illumina, Oxford Nanopore, PacBio. And then we've got pharma. So pharma, pharmaceuticals, they are using scientific research to create medicines for consumers to then sell on to markets. These are two biotech, pharma, industry kind of fields that you could go into with a bioinformatics background. If you're working in biotech, then their products are going to have data that is released. So you could be analyzing this data to, to work in synergy. Did I just say synergy? Jesus. <laughs> so if you're working in industry, you're working with that company to either A, improve the product through like the product development life cycle and creating new features or fixing bugs, making their product better. So in terms of bioinformatics, you can think about it as if your product is something, a new method in the wet lab, you'd be analyzing the outputs of that data, doing QC analysis, seeing how good it is, feeding that back to the people in the wet lab, and they can then optimize the product. Say you're working with a company making sequence data, You'll also be building computational products. So what do we mean by that? <laughs> what do we mean by that? If you've got companies who are creating sequences, then their products generate sequence data, but often they will offer suites of analytical tools 
to analyze their data. So you could be involved in generating new analytical tools specifically designed to analyze the sequence data of certain platforms. There's loads of things you could do in the biotech space, but think about it as improving a product. You're involved in product development. You're making something as best as you can with continuous improvement. When we think about the world of pharma, what are we doing in pharma? Well, pharma is taking life science research, converting it into medicines. So you'd be involved in the data analysis within that workflow. I've mentioned big things here, biotech, pharma, but I think it's key to remember that this is where all the small companies are. So things called startups. Uh, you might be familiar with the term, you might not be, but yeah, a startup is a very small company. They've got a fantastic idea, probably spun out of academia and they're building up their company. So startups are a great way to get into the bioinformatics industry landscape. Career growth in industry looks a little bit different to the world of academia. So you don't need a PhD to grow up the ladder in industry. What you need is to add value. So if you're adding value to that company, then you're going to excel. You'll have opportunities to lead groups of data scientists, lead groups of bioinformaticians, be the leading face of that company's tech stack be the consultant for that company's bioinformatics. There are kind of more major roles available to you in industry that are less available to you in the academic sphere because they're conserved for the traditional academics, the people that have PhDs and postdocs and stuff. If you're wanting to advance up the career ladder without doing PhDs, industry is probably the way. And I know that many people will say, oh, there's a glass ceiling, ah! And you know what, like there probably is, but I believe that the landscape is changing. More people are getting into this space without PhDs and there are lots of people at the top without them proving that you don't need them. So industry, more money, more career growth, and you provide value by making a product better rather than publishing papers. Again, in industry, like the operational academic science, you'll get to work in Agile, you get to work in Scrum. And these are really, really important things to learn because if you end up moving outside of academia, which you probably will, then you'll need to be familiar with these kinds of terms and ways of working. Number three on the list is tech. If they're working with health biological data, we can call them a biotech, but if they're not working with biological data, then we call them a tech company. So why can we go work in tech with our bioinformatics skill set? Well, that's because you know how to code. So you can go be a data scientist, a data analyst, a software engineer, any of these coding roles. If you can do the coding, you can, I sound like if I've done the crime, I'll do the time. If you've done the coding, you can go work there. If you've got that skill set, you can go and work in tech, which is, yeah, Really cool because if you fall out of love with biology, maybe if you want to climb up the finance money ladder, maybe you want to go chase money, then you've got this option to completely change field, go into tech, make loads of money. And sometimes like, I know people say that it's less rewarding because you're going into a, like you're moving away from science. And obviously a lot of the reason why we all love science is because you feel like you're doing good. But think about it. I think working in tech, you can also still do really good. You can be building products that are being really helpful. Like, I don't know, say you go work at a social media company and you build a screening platform that like stops underage people accessing really bad content. I don't know, that would still be really helpful to people and you're still creating value that you find meaningful. So I think don't dismiss it going into tech at some point in your career. And I think it's super cool that that option's always available to you. I might get to 45 years old and be like, hey, I wanna go work at Instagram and design new filters for Instagram. I mean, I doubt I'll, <laughs> I doubt I'll think like that when I'm 45, but do you know what I mean? It's really cool to have multiple options available to you with your bioinformatics skill set. We came from learning that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and now working at Facebook. Like, it's really cool that you can make that transition 
because your skill set is the same. You can work with computers, you can work with big data, you can code stuff up. The sky's the limit here, um, especially with salary. <laughs> also, side note, people can jump from tech into bio, into bioinformatics. So if you've got the computer science background, you've worked as a data scientist, a lot of places will allow you to learn the biology domain knowledge on the job in a bioinformatics job. So these, this kind of like tech biology world, people can switch between the two. You can even spend your career hopping between the two if you like, but that's the beauty of a bioinformatics skill set. You've got the choice to go over into tech, come back to bio, whatever you fancy. Number four. So number four is our miscellaneous section. How exciting. Other things you could go into with a bioinformatics skill set. So number one, recruitment. I know it sounds crazy, but you could go work at a recruitment agency recruiting bioinformaticians, rise up the ranks there. It's definitely a career where your skill set is valuable. You can go into consulting. Say you get really good at what you do. Instead of being an employee for somebody, you could be a bioinformatics consultant. Go and help startups, be a consultant. Show them and advise them what they could do for their product with your skill set that you have. Very cool career or side hustle. You can then transition into operational roles. So say you've been working as a bioinformatician in an industrial company or within an operations academic space, you can then transition to be the person that's organizing the science. Another one you can go over to is going into product management. When we're working in Scrum and Agile, we have product managers helping manage those products. And if you've got a bioinformatics background, going into product management is definitely a career option for you as well. We've talked about going into tech for data analysis, but also highlighting you can go into more different types of tech roles. So things like DevOps, software engineers, cybersecurity. There's a bunch of different codey techie roles available to you that aren't just data analytics. You could go into conference planning, event management for biology events. You could become a YouTuber, jokes. <laughs> Yeah, there's loads of things you can do. The sky's the limit. So guys, that is the end of today's video. So what have we learned today? Bioinformatics skill set, biology, computer science, data analytics. What can we do with that? We can go academia, which is either academic, pure academic, research, core services or operational. We can go into industry, whether that's biotech, pharma, large companies, startups. We can go into tech companies, so leaving the biology domain knowledge behind, but still doing really cool, valuable product development. We've talked about how important product development is. And then we've touched on some random jobs that you probably weren't thinking about. Recruitment, event planning, HR, product management, agile, scrum, scrum master, there's another one. There's loads of stuff you can go into once you've got this skill set. So don't think you just have to be an academic. The sky is the limit when it comes to this skill set. Thanks for joining me on another video of Genomics with Georgia. If today has been helpful for you, please like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you on another video. Bye.